All right, I want to talk to my reloaders out there about uh, sensitivity to temperature with their powders. It's something I've never actually thought about before. But um, I was watching a video and uh, I was watching it for a different reason because I was studying up on barrel harmonics. And Tiberius Rex was talking about how some of his powders uh, between when he's 20 degrees below Fahrenheit and when he's out there at the summer at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, how there can be up to 100 feet per second difference in his velocity when he chronos them. I was like, holy mackerel, 100 feet per second? That's a huge difference. I mean, that's going to throw your barrel harmonics to, to pot. Uh, so I started studying, and I found out that some gunpowders are formulated to not have this effect. So, for instance, this gunpowder here, made by Hodgson's, it was introduced in the 1950s, but they formulated it since then. They've changed the formula of it uh, and tweaked it to where it is uh, an extreme powder now, and it is not supposed to be very sensitive to cold and heat. So instead of 100 feet per second, it only is affected about 10 feet per second over that huge temperature range. Uh, this new powder by IMR, the 7977, it says on the bottle, insensitive to temperature change. Uh, and then this bottle of IMR here, 4350, it's got nothing on the bottle. So I'm willing to bet this is, this is not heat resistant or cold resistant. This is a normal powder. So if you're going to be going out and you're going to be making your loads in the summer and hunting in the winter, my best advice for you is to pick a powder and do your research and find one that is not very sensitive to heat and cold changes. Because again, I'm at 102 degrees right now while I'm doing my testing. And when I'm going hunting, I'm going to be in the morning. It's like right at freezing every morning where I go hunting. So uh, I need a powder that's not going to slow down my bullet a, a whole lot in that. Now, if you're at close range, it's not going to matter. But if you are making yourself a long range shooter, you need to take that into effect. Because if you go out with the wrong powder and you're shooting at a long range target, not only is your barrel harmonic going to be thrown off, the air density of cold air is denser, so it slows the bullet down more, and then your bullet's leaving the barrel going slower still. So all of a sudden, instead of hitting the bullseye, you wound an animal, and you track it for a day, and you don't recover it. And it's not fair to you, and it's not fair to the animal to do that if you can prevent it. So again, if you're a reloader, uh, do that. If you have a favorite bullet, do what I did. Go out and test it. Take normal bullets, a normal temperature summer day, Take some other of your bullets, put them in a baggie, stick them in the freezer, stick them in an ice chest, take them to the range, and when you shoot them, put them in, and then when you sh close the bolt, get on target and fire. Don't take too much time because it'll heat up the bullet. So try to leave the, leave the bullet in, then when you're ready to shoot, then you rack the bolt forward and you fire. Uh, and that'll give you a good estimate if it's accurate cold, uh, the same as if it's accurate warm. Now I know most of the major manufacturers that manufacture high quality bullets, they're going to be using powders that are immune to the heat because they don't want uh, their bullets performing badly just because it's cold after, they know hunters go in, out in the summer and target shoot and then they go hunting in the winter. They don't want them missing in the winter so they're gonna plan ahead for that more than likely. But you might as well test it and make sure.